It's medium cold water. You all set for Yep. Okay. This meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press and posted in the Municipal Bulletin Board. All notices are on file with the Planning Board Secretary. Fire exits are located the east and west sides of the Council Chambers, as well as the rear of the building. I would ask anyone with a cell phone or other device to kindly put in silent mode for the duration of the meeting. Just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded by APTV. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Set. Okay. Um, regarding the uh, the agenda, the agenda is going to um, uh, contain a referral from the mayor and council for a review of the amendment to the Springwood Avenue res uh, redevelopment plan. Um, there's also two resolutions uh, on the table for MDB uh, Properties LLC and Asbury Park Distilling. After that, we're going to have some commi committee updates, and then there'll be some discussion regarding. Um, our professionals and because there are some up that for with RFPs and whatnot and there may be a vote taken at that point we may go into executive session at that point um, we'll see when that time comes so uh, we go for the approval of the minutes on the agenda we have the minutes for March 12th 2018 any I move that we approve the minutes from that meeting second uh, question yeah, I revised. Okay, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, who's the second? Yvonne. Yvonne. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, we ready to hear the application? Yes? Yes. yes. <coughs> Have you sworn? Why don't we um, enter our exhibits in right away? The, uh, I think the first one should be C1, the resolution 2018-103, which was the referral over. Do we have a anyone have a copy of that? Oh, yeah, I have one. I, okay. Oh, you have one, but mine's marked up. If you have one, Are Barbara, you? do you have Michelle? Mark it. Please. Uh, Michelle Alonso, your report of 321, I assume that's been submitted to the board, so you're going to work off of that too, correct? So why don't we have that mark C2? Do you have a copy? Uh, have a copy? Yeah. All right, let's mark that as C2. <coughs> uh, C2. And is there a 67 or 68 pager that has to be marked into? Is that the plan amendment? It's the plan amendment. All right, so if you have that, let's make that C3. Barbara, do you need a copy of yeah, that? Yeah, I think. I'll just mark the resume. Okay, so we'll have that. Uh, in addition to swearing in Michelle Alonso, we'll, sh we'll swear in our staff also. This way we can get a good discussion going. Please raise your right hand. Please only swear if any testimony of during these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do? Yes. State your names and your affiliation with the city. Yes. Michelle Alonso, Director of Planning and Redevelopment, City of Asbury Park. Thank you. Michael Sullivan with Parkade Hints, Interim Planning Board Planner. Jason Fisher, Board Engineer. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. Okay. okay, good evening, board members and members of the public. I am here to present to you tonight a referral from the Municipal Council for Amendments to the Springwood Avenue Redevelopment Plan. This will be the fourth amendment to this plan, and it, there are two purposes for tonight's amendment. One is to amend the gateway zone to permit on the municipally owned lot valley parking. That's it because the city would like to, it's not Sandstone, but would like to explore 
valley parking as a way to alleviate parking congestion in the downtown and is investigating on municipal lots whether we would go forward with that. So while that's not set in stone, the plan amendment at least permits it if the municipality decides to go forward with such a parking scheme. And then the second amendment that's being presented tonight are amendments to the residential zone in the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan. And the primary purpose of the amendments is to permit detached one and two family housing. Currently the plan only permits attached housing. So in my report, I do reference the pages <coughs> with the amendments. The first one I spoke about is on page 25 on properties fronting Memorial Drive, valet <coughs> parking on tax block 608 lot one is the, the lettering in red. That's the insertion to permit valet parking. On page 27, Springwood Avenue residential zone, permitted principal uses, you can see in red, I added the language and detached two family dwellings, and then on the next bullet point, and detached single family dwellings. Then on the next page, I, I am proposing changes to the bulk requirements. And the reason that we are looking at the, de the detached housing and changing the bulk requirements is that um, one of the contract developers <coughs> for city parcel across from, from Springwood Park <coughs> is, has made the request to city council to do detached rather than attached housing. And the other significant changes is, is that the um, second unit will be above the garage facing Adams Street. To accommodate this request, also the building, the, it will be a two-story structure as the principal structure, and it is at this time estimated to be 20, about 20 feet rather than the required minimum 25 feet. So one of the changes that I'm proposing is under height and yard requirements, principal structures, two stories or 22 feet. And then minimum side yard setbacks. It was written for an attached house, five feet for the unattached side, then for, I add the language for attached buildings, and then three feet for unattached buildings. And then the final um, change that I'm proposing is for accessory structures, that maximum permitted height be 20 feet because now the garage will have a unit on the second floor. And I don't think this is detrimental because all these, the garages will have its own street frontage on, on Adams Street. Then after having conversation, I had conversation with the board planner today and he had recommended two additional clarifications <coughs> to the plan, which I agree with because so on page 26, Mr. Sullivan is recommending clarifying language under permitted accessory uses and structures because the second unit will now be in the accessory structure to make that clearer to say single family unit above a garage, which is, which is accessory to a permitted residential use. And then the second clarification would be on page 32 in the parking chart, because the parking chart, chart refers to attached structures, we would strike the word attached. Mm -hmm. What was that page, the second one? Page 32. Thank you. Okay, okay. So that, that's a, 
in a nutshell, I also want to comment that I do believe that these changes conform with the master plan and that it promotes affordable housing. Uh, well, this plan in this plan is required that all projects have 20% affordable housing. Many of these amendments were requested by the contract developer in order to affect to move this move the project forward. And by doing these changes in the zone, it would it will help promote affordable housing. I don't see anything with these changes to permit detached housing as contrary to anything in the newly adopted master plan. I have a question. Are, are, are you done? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, do we have to do a change to the to the uh, amended plan? Can't we just give them a variance? No, and I should. I'll explain why. Because what we're changing is a principal use, and you cannot give a variance to a use. That's in the jurisdiction of the zoning board. Redevelopment plans are within the jurisdiction of the planning board. There is a provision in this plan, as w and with all our plans, in that you can seek the equivalent of a variance. Sometimes it's called a deviation. In the waterfront plan, I believe it's called a waiver, but it's the equivalent of a variance for bulk, because anything that's a C variance, because only the planning board hears um, the planning board hears site plans with C variances. The planning board cannot hear D variance. And for them to build a detached housing without this plan change would be a D variance. Mm -hmm. Or you wind up in a plan <coughs> amendment situation. Right. Yeah. That's why it's, a, it's an amendment. And then, the, of course, the next step from here after the planning board gives its recommendation is that we go back to municipal council for hearing as an ordinance. So that means that any development going forward can have detached housing? Only housing in the residential zone. So on page 12 of the plan is the map. In yellow, I'll give you all a minute to turn. Turn what? Turn, turn pages to page yeah. 12. <laughs> Unless you have a computer, you, we can't turn it. <laughs> oh, we have it here. <laughs> oh, no, okay. it's, it's in, it's in, it's, it's in connect, it's uh, right. in the ordinance that was brought over. I mean, it was in the resolution that was brought to us. If somebody needs, I have an extra copy. Yeah, I have to. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 What was that in? Right, with the, the attachment, because that's the plan, the, the plan, right. except what's in red and the strikeout. See the yellow? That's the residential zone. Almost all of the residential zone is either built out or is going to be, or which is the townhomes, or the, it's Michael's development. Actually, the townhomes got cut out of this redevelopment plan in the amendment 2014. Um, the parcel that we're talking about across from the park, Lincoln Village, which we anticipate is going to be a townhouse development because of the density that's required to rebuild that. Boston Way, which has its approvals and is a, a townhouse development, and Asbury Park Village, which we also anticipate would be rebuilt as a townhouse development. So at this point, all these requests that, that, that you've put forward, you don't feel that there would be any uh, negative impact to future development, not only this one, one development that we're talking about, what about others that are in this area? That's what you're kind of saying, right. is that the anticipation is that we're going to have townhomes, it's not going to have an impact to that, that's, that's your thought. Right, because you can still do attached housing, you can do, still do multifamily in this district. And these the, are going, actually every other project in the zone will be a, an, a, a rental with affordable, well there, everything has affordable housing, but we're talking about Michael's development, which will be a rental and 100% affordable, and all the housing authority projects, which actually some may have a market housing component, but again, will be rental and they will, 
they will be apartment building structures or townhouse structures. I don't see anyone else except the except um, the contract developer wanting to build low density housing. Thank you. Michelle, is it is it true, I think it's my understanding that the number of units won't actually change from what was proposed, right? Correct. Because density is staying the same. Right. Yeah. It's just <coughs> how it's built. The form is the going form. to right. Right. And the number of units is twenty? Yes. Okay. Square footage stays the same? For the proposed pot project, at it, where it is currently, no. From what has been shown to myself and the municipal, ugh, municipal council, no. But there is no restriction in this plan. Uh, or it, it, for this plan, it meets minimum square footage. But that also is not part of this amendment to amend square footage. But it's different than what was originally proposed to the planning board. Correct. The project, when it comes back to the planning board, after plan amendment, would come back for site plan review, is going to be significantly different. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a question about the valet parking? Um, sure. So it's on lot 608. It's on, on this page, is it one of the red areas along Memorial? Same page? Right yes, there. it's the lot that backs up on the train station that comes to a peak got it that's currently a municipal lot that is used for both got it that's used for but it has some commercial no it's all parking so the because oh, just here. Right, the lower right. portion of gotcha. that is privately owned, and if you're in that parking lot, you, it's very hard to distinguish where the private right. and the public ends, except we do issue parking permits for businesses in the CBD to be able to park in the lot that's the municipal lot currently. Got it. So okay. is there anticipated any change to the parking units that are issued, like to the passes that are issued to the CBD, like if you're valet parking there, or do you anticipate, do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're valet parking there, how will that affect the, the employees that park there? I mean, I could answer that yeah. question. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah. <laughs> basically, if you're a resident or an employee downtown, you get what's called a zone four residential permit. That allows you to park on Lake Ave, Summerfield Ave, the municipal and all three municipal lots around the train station what we have seen kind of anecdotally is that almost none of those permit holders park on memorial drive mm -hmm. um, in fact really the only people parking on memorial drive are some people who are taking the train for daily uses and a lot of commercial businesses actually store some cars there which we would like to kind of stop happening so one of the reasons we want to find a more active use for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, any other comments from the board? So, um, but valet parking could, it, it would be potentially a, a temporary use. So oh, like yes. if the city wanted to reserve the right to do something else on that block. Almost oh, definitely, because that's part of our larger vision of redeveloping this site. But again, it's in there and we, the municipality has not yet determined whether it even wants to go forward with valet parking to alleviate CBD parking. But right. even for us to consider it, it needs to be in the plan. So do you think that also, like I can see along with valet parking, the use of like a share car service. So by putting it just as like valet parking, does that exclude the use of no, car share? No, not at all. Because right now it's a, a, it, the car share can go in there as its current use as a principal parking lot. Okay. Anybody else? Any, any other questions from the board? I have one more question, but it's just a clarification. On page 2567, um, the second bullet from the bottom, where it says professional business offices and banks provided a minimum of 50% of the ground floor area. So does that just, it, it, this is in the existing, it's not a proposed change, right. but can you just explain what that 50% requirement, it could be 100% residential. It's just up to 50% could be this other use. Other way. <clears throat> okay. I think I think <laughs> if I'm reading it right, I just couldn't say at least it. half of that ground floor has to be commercial. Right. It can't be 100. 
50 no. percent. Okay, so other principal uses other than residential. Right. Okay. I just I read it like five times. I couldn't understand it. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the uh, professionals? Are we okay that it's part of the uh, the spirit of the master plan? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a different, that's not a question, that's a direct <laughs> okay. opinion, if you'd like it. I would like if that it's, opinion, it's please, because point. it is something that is being requested by the resolution that yeah, the planning board provide an right. answer to that. Part of our statutory obligation. Yes. Um, it is part of our obligation, and uh, as part of this uh, review, I have reviewed uh, both the Springwood Avenue um, redevelopment plan, as well as the uh, most recent master plan and re-examination report amendment. Um, first, uh, in terms of the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan goals, um, it says it talks about improving the availability of adequate, appropriate housing alternatives without displacement. Um, these minor changes to the uh, residential uh, building standards and, and principal use, uh, they don't change density, so they're not reducing the amount of housing that's permitted. Um, and uh, it's also in, uh, providing for uh, the accessory apartment with, a, with an office on the ground floor, potentially a live-work type unit, which increases the, um, uh, the diversity of housing alternatives uh, and options. So uh, it's consistent with that. It's not, uh, it's not inconsistent at all. The increased height for the garage, um, recognizing there's going to be an accessory apartment possibly permitted, also allows a more viable uh, residential unit back there. So it's consistent with the, the Springwood Avenue goals. In terms of the master plan, uh, section 5.1.2 of the master plan talks about goals and talks about promotional quality of life. These are very generic goals for the master plan, but still it's consistent with them, uh, providing for a variety of housing types um, and redevelopment and revitalization of the Springwood Avenue corridor, uh, which is specifically mentioned as a, a planning goal for the overall master plan, not just the redevelopment plan. Um, uh, in the uh, in the land use section under 5.2.1.1, it talks about upgrading some standard properties. This is a vacant property which was formerly developed, um, but it's been cleared, and upgrading the appearance and function of neighborhood business areas. Now, this is on the edges of the neighborhood business areas, so you can look at it as uh, consistent in that respect as well. Um, and then moving down into the housing section of the master plan, where it talks about uh, encouraging a variety of housing as the Springwood plant does, uh, and encouraging greater home ownership. We understand that these are going to be tenanted for owners. Um, so there's no change to that with respect to this amendment, so I don't see any conflicts there, and those consistencies would remain even through this amendment. Thank you. Can I actually ask one more question? Sorry, not to harp on the parking, but just because I do think it's it's an issue for the city and it's going mm -hmm. to continue to be one in the near future. So I just want to clarify, the spots now in that lot where you want to do the valet, are they currently paid parking? No. no. Or no, they're currently free parking. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, um, any public questions to uh, Michelle? It's public question time. Public comment is coming very shortly. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to open for public comment? Motion. Application. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Uh, anyone from the public that would like to make a comment? Come on up. Uh, please state your name and um, and residence. Okay. Gail Rosewater, um, 309 Lake Avenue in Asbury Park. Um, I'm here, I'm, I'm the chair of the Wesley Lake Commission, and um, I just wanted to make a few comments on that, um, the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan. We did meet with the organization last summer, a couple of us, and we talked for a long time about um, different options for stormwater management. And that's my big concern right now from the Wesley Lake Commission, because what's running into that lake is um, a shame. And that is also part of the master plan. And I think this is a really important project, and I don't mean to minimize it. And really, I don't think the Wesley Lake Commission cares whether or not their townhouses or their individual residences. But what does that do? And I don't really expect you to answer this, but the questions are, what does that do to the land around these homes? 
Um, of course we want it to be grass and we want it to be rain gardens and we want it to be tree boxes and bioswales so that the water can go into the land and be filtered somewhat before it goes into our lakes. That's so important and I know that that's not really what you're talking about tonight, but please planning board be mindful of stormwater management. That water goes into our lakes and into our oceans and it is really a problem. Um, an environmental problem. And so we want to ask any developer to do, I ask you to be mindful and to ask any developer or redeveloper to consider stormwater management, whether it's a big developer or a little developer. And um, to if, if, if they don't because of ordinances and regulations and what you are bound by, they don't have to really, any developer doesn't have to change something. Um, I, I, we understand, but perhaps they could build a rain garden somewhere in between the development that they're building and the lake that they're impacting, or put in tree boxes or bioswales or um, storm scepters or whatever it is that they feel that they could do to contribute to the, um, the community and the ecosystem of our community, which is, again, part of the master plan. <laughs> so that, that's all I ask is that you, you consider this um, as people are, are making plans and changing plans. Um, what does that do to stormwater management? Thank you. Ma'am, thank I'm you. Sorry. Thanks. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Can I swear you in after the fact? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you saw me swear a firm testimony you give during these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Motion to close public? I move to close public session. Public comment. Senator. Aye. 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 Uh, any other board comment regarding this application? Or this redevelopment plan request? No? Okay. Um, uh, Jack, are there, um, do you have the conditions that you need in order to, for us so to be able to vote? You're going to find, I, I assume, based on the testimony of both Michael and Michelle, this evening that the proposed amendments are consistent with the city master plan and the current Springwood Avenue redevelopment plans, goals, and objectives. Uh, and I don't know what else you want me to put in there at this point. No, it will be the, the, the two, request. The two comments? The, the additional two comments, comments that Michelle put at the, uh, that were not in the original okay. request that she received from our right. planner. So on page 27, under principal accessory uses and structures, we're going to add a bullet. That's okay. Barbara, are you getting this? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Single family unit above a garage, which is accessory to a permitted residential use. Got that far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so next And then on page 32, in the parking chart, we're going to strike out on the second and third line of the chart, the words attached. So we'll just read single family dwellings and two family dwellings. Good work. So if we were to add that, ink it into the blanks as three, three conditions, uh, not only can you vote on the action tonight, but you can also adopt the resolution and then we're well within our time frame mm -hmm. to take care of this. And then tomorrow I'll talk to Barbara, I'll just type in the, what we've already adopted tonight, mm -hmm. make the ink changes into TypeScript. Anybody want to put a motion to act on this application with conditions specified? Uh, I move that we approve the amendment to the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan. I second amendment that. Plural. Amendments. Amendments. Yes. With the conditions. With the conditions. With the conditions additions. Well, they recommended. Actually, actually recommended. Yeah, we, we only make findings and recommendations to the mayor and council, which is in here. We make the following findings and recommendations to the mayor and city council. Okay, okay. so I move that we make the recommendation to make the amendment to the Springwood Avenue redevelopment plan with the conditions and additions that were talked about. Okay. I second that. Councilman Yvonne Clayton? Yes. Mayor John Moore? No. Michael Manzella? Yes. Tony Perillo? Yes. Trudy Syfax? Yes. Alexis Taylor? Yes. Uh, Allison McLeod? Yes. And Barbara Krizak? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, you want to offer yep. the, is that for both the action as well as the resolution? Of the the resolution? <coughs> I move that we approve the resolution memorializing said referral. Barbara, I second that. Second so right. When you I'll call second. the roll, exclude mayor. The mayor, please. Second. Was he voted no on the action? For the resolution, Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Yes. Michael Manzello. Yes. Tony Carrillo. Yes. Trudy Syfax. Yes. Alexis Taylor. Yes. Allison McLeod. Yes. Barbara Prisak. Yes. All right, let's move forward with the resolutions. Jeff? Before we go on, can I just okay. make a, sh a very short statement? Should I be handed out something? Uh, maybe I really didn't have a real problem with this amendment, but I have a problem with the system. And maybe it's a recommendation to the planning board and to the council. This plan goes back to 2008. This plan is 10 years old. Uh, a comprehensive review of the plan has never been undertaken in the past 10 years. Every now and then, an um, amendment comes up and we react to A, B, or C, but we're not reacting to the whole plan. At minimum, I think there should be cleaning up of some out outdated statutory language. I, I could take you to page 60 of 67. Bullet point two, redevelopers should work with the Office of Asbury Works to ensure training and employment for pre-construction, construction and post-construction jobs for Asbury Park residents. There has not been an Asbury Park Works for five years. So who do these developers go to? So we're, again, we're, we're hitting bits and pieces and I have no problem with that, but we're not looking at the entire plan. And this is not just Springwood Avenue. This is CBD, this is Main Street, this is Asbury Avenue, and the Scattered Sites plan was probably none of us know what the hell that means. So uh, again, I don't know if it's the planning board, I don't know if it's lack of council. No, it's council. Council? It comes from council. These okay, well I made this statement at a council meeting, I made that statement at a council meeting also, I'll make it again Wednesday. But again, to keep on going along with the 10 year old plan that is filled with errors and it was not being enforced to me is just a major mistake for the city of Asbury Park. I'll leave it at that. One other thing just to mention about that also is that we did in the, in the master plan, we did make a request mm. to to update all the all, all the ones that you'd mentioned. So we should, we should, we've also included it and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the redevelopment plan action items. So can the re, so can the planning board put that in strong language to mayor and council that for the city to succeed and go forward mayor and council you have to look at all these plants and update them because they're 10 years old and because they're outdated they were good 10 years ago things have changed and again it doesn't have to be an entire review but cleaning up of some language that again we're dealing with an organization that hasn't dealt been alive for five years who's supposed to be monitoring that Asbury Park residents are being hired and right now Asbury Park residents are not being hired to the best of my knowledge but there's nobody out there checking on it because we go back to the plan that's in in use and it's addressed to a company that's defunct yes. come on you're still on the road I just want to address that even though the plan says that the redevelopers agreement does talk about does address local hiring so even though the plan says that this is some because it's even though it's in the plan it doesn't fall under the zoning section so now i don't have a clue what you're talking about and it but and it's taking I, care of a redevelopers agreement right but it's what it's taking care of in the redevelopers agreement i don't believe so okay but okay. Uh, but but it would have more part. clout if it was taken care of in both even if it is in the redevelopers agreement but I don't believe so. And again, I, I just looked at one page and found two mistakes. So I mean, on one page, just going through this briefly today, 67 page report, if I can find two mistakes, be it bullet point two and bullet point four on page 60 of 67, how many other mistakes possibly could be out there? So I, I don't see anything wrong with anybody saying, geez, every three, four or five years, we should review things and see if they were up to snuff and if it's being done correctly. 
Right. I'm just saying that if you have that specific concern, that that because it's not on the zoning end, that's something that's taken care of in the redeveloper's agreement. Well, again, I disagree. But I do think it's a general concern. Actually, if Jack, can you provide clarification on how we would go about, like, does the planning board need to write a, a well, recommendation? Well, you're, 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 you're just backing up what you did with your master plan, essentially. Yeah. So you can send a letter to the governing body saying, you know, consideration of the master plan, mm -hmm. we outline this, would you please move forward? And, and review all plans. Because mm -hmm. we can't act on our own on these. That has to come from mayor and council over to us via resolution just like this one. Look at these recommendations, you know, to overhaul CBD scattered sites uh, and Springwood Avenue and a few others, Washington Avenue, all nine yards. Right. And the, could the recommendations within the, the reexamination report were very, very generic in terms of, we all know these are out there. We can't look at each of these individually within the framework of this, but they should be looked at and to understand what's going on. So that that's does it's, mean, a, it's a natural intended. outflow of the reexamination. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, someone would draft that letter, and then the board would would that come in front of a, a planning board meeting, and we would approve. No, if you want to authorize the uh, chair to author a letter um, consistent with what you're discussing, draft the letter up before it's sent to every it's sent to mayor and council, just circulated via email. And, and have your comments go back directly to the chair mm -hmm. as opposed to collectively, which gets us into quorum issues. Right. Yeah. And then assuming uh, everybody signs on board, then you draft a letter up on the board, on city station, or from the planning board to the mayor council. Well, there's a master plan implementation subcommittee of the planning board, so right? Thanks to do it. Uh, yeah, I would think yeah, that would be part there. of the yeah, full. Do that. Sure. Yeah. Because there'll, there'll, there'll be more than one letter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there'll be one, and, and, be one really long letter. Yeah. And, and it could be very time consuming a very long and getting done just because again I've always been told a redevelopment zone trumps the master plan so mm -hmm. the quicker we act on it the better off we are no it no. doesn't trump the master plan no no the, no what wouldn't there may be a little bit of confusion. nobody's ever told me that Has to, is the waterfront redevelopment plan um, well, that doesn't trump the mass plan. As you know, any changes to that, because that's its own special animal, requires the the um, the developer the um, to approve any plan changes. And while that doesn't necessarily trump, I believe you know we've had you know it's been a hurdle to have that plan align with the master plan because any changes need the master developer's approval. But no, the master plan's recommendations trickle down. And if the master plan says to make a, a change to a redevelopment plan, then it's up to the governing body and the planning board to enact it. Typically, what's going to happen is, if, with, mass, with redevelopment plans, if you're going to make wholesale changes to them, not, not just tweak it, and they're going to become inconsistent with the master plan, Realistically, you, you make sure if you're going to you're going to fly in the face of the master plan, you should make your master plan be consistent with the redevelopment. You want them both to be consistent with each other. You don't want two big documents to be at odds with each other. That's for sure. So okay. if you're going to do well, one, you do the other. That's all. It's, it's again, I said at, at minimum, cleaning up some outdated statutory language. Yeah, that's it. That, that isn't going to be inconsistent. No, but that's something that hasn't been done in ten years. Yeah, they, these okay. things they're, 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 they have a life. They they evolve. You know, right. They need to be looked at for sure. Thank you. So, um, John, am I understanding you to say, even though it may be in writing, there's no actual person make sh making sure that what's there is being done. Absolutely. Okay. Can we move forward to the uh, resolution adoption? Sure. Uh, Go for, uh, I, I cleaned up. I had a senior moment, I guess, and I put the I put the uh, shared driveway recommendation in the distillery uh, <laughs> resolution, <laughs> which Barbara pointed out to me. Thank you, and I cleaned that up immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is now where it should be, and the rest of the changes uh, they're in there. Sent the boat. I, I haven't made any other changes.
begin a motion to uh, approve or, or deny the motion. Uh, let's make sure our name DV, uh, Barbara will get the right uh, the people listed in the uh, vote. Yeah, we have uh, Mayor John Moore, Henry's not here, Allison, Michael, Barbara, Also we on Clayton, Rick's not here, and Tony Farrell. So, so one of that Barbara made the motion. Get the motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt, to approve. Second. Okay, Mayor John Moore. Yes. Allison McLeod? Yes. Michael Manzella? Yes. Barbara Trizak? Yes. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton? Yes. And Tony Farrella? Yes. And we go to the next Yasbury Park Distilling Resolution. Move to approve the resolution. Second. Mike. Uh, uh, Michael Manzella? Yes. Councilwoman Yvonne <coughs> Clayton? Yes. Allison McLeod? Yes. Barbara Krizak? Yes. Mayor John Moore? Yes. And Tony Farrella? Yes. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question about the uh, the executive session. Is this the moment that we would do that, or was well, it that's whether down later on we'll, need, we'll find out? Okay. All right. Um, we need uh, the updates for the uh, the planning board committees. I believe that the TRC did not meet. Design review committee did not meet. Bylaws committee did not meet. Did not meet. <laughs> okay, the master plan committee did meet, <laughs> and Rick Rick was not here. Is not here to give the update, but I'll I'll briefly uh, state what we did. Uh, is that that we'd created a, essentially a cross reference or a spreadsheet of all of the ac actions that we would like to have taken as part of the master plan um, implement. Uh, it's really a master plan implementation plan. So I'll say that a couple of times fast. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is that we've uh, assigned, assigned uh, responsible parties and trying to figure out who should be doing the various uh, various tasks. After we, actually Rick already went, we, the subcommittee went through it all. We are now, he came back to us with all of the entries that we, that we made. We're gonna review it again. The subcommittee's gonna review it again. And if we've got it right, then we're going to ask Michelle um, from the city to, to look through it to make sure that we have the right people in the right places for the plan. And then we're going to sit down and kind of help try to figure out the timing of all this. What are the priorities that we have to deal with? What are the, you know, what are the, do we have all the potential partners that are correct? The people that are responsible, do we have them correct? And go through the whole plan uh, for all that. And we also did, at the end of it, thanks to Allison, we did, uh, add a whole, uh, I don't even know how many pages worth of grants that we could go after in order to help accomplish some of the things that we're looking for in the master to, in the master plan. So we'll uh, incorporate that there also. So once we, um, once we, we're hoping to probably meet with Michelle probably within the next few weeks and hopefully we'll be able to, we're, we're moving forward on this. Let's just say that. Will there be a point where the board will have a chance to review the whole oh, matrix? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Once, oh, I, I kind of feel that, that once we go over it with Michelle, to just kind of like as our partner, to kind of go through this and say, okay, are we okay? Then we'll give it to the planning board and say, all right, we'll do a presentation actually. Rick will do one to the planning board so they can see everything we've done. Get your input before we actually present it to the council, the yeah. mayor and council. So that'll be, uh, that, that's kind of like the plan. Um, so that's where the master plan committee is. Unless Allison, you have anything else, or Devon covered it? No. Okay. I think you did a good job. Okay. When the good news is a subcommittee that's been doing this. Okay. Did we get any of this information? Not yet. No. no. Not yet. We're still it doing. It come yeah, out. We're still, oh, okay. The subcommittee still is still working. Right. Right. Oh, well, Rick is the head draft. of the subcommittee. It's okay. a draft <coughs> of a draft. So okay. we're we're getting there. And then we'll bring it to everybody before it gets published. Obviously, all of you will see it. To get your input, say, are we good, are we bad, what, else, what do you want, what changes you want to make, and then we'll go to mayor and council and present it to them. Okay. All right, we're, um, actually, actually the F, next item F, is the discussion. F comes before E. F comes before E. Yes, because, <laughs> I mean, F does come before I'm, I'm rearranging the alphabet now. Right, F, F does come before E, you're right. You have this, if you need to go into executive session, then do that, and then. All right. If you don't, fine, go into the discussion. 
Okay. All right. Um, I'd like to kind of ask, should we, do, does the board feel that they need to go into executive session regarding the, uh, the, uh, the vote for the planner? Or have, want to have discussion about the planners? Or actually consider. Uh, Considering the, the two planners? The, 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 the submissions, not the The submissions. The yes. votes in public. Does ever, anyone feel that they want to go into executive session? Just a question mm -hmm. for you, Barbara. Yes. Just, do you feel like there was a consensus? Yes. OK, then I don't think we need to. I don't want to go, I'm not suggesting executive session, but I did have a question clarification, which was a legal one, but I think it can be handled as part of our discussion. Not requiring executive session. Okay. Okay. Should I ask that? <laughs> Are we going to open discussion? Well, if you ask it and it does require an executive <laughs> session, we can just go into executive session. <laughs> so, okay. so ask it. So, uh, no, I just wanted clarification on the conflict planner position. What would, who is it that determines that there is a conflict that then oh. it would go to? It's Typically, true. it's the professional themselves. Okay. You know, I'll know when I have a conflict. Michael will re recognize, and so will Jason, because we would be we're, we're 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 in the field. So, you know, if all of a sudden somebody comes in and I go, oh, geez, I represented so and so ten years ago, or that would be a conflict. planning work for so and so development company in got it. That so they don't typically okay. come from the ground up. We'll we'll recognize it bring it to the board's attention. Excellent. Okay, oh, thank you. I thought it meant when you were on vacation. Well, that's it. I mean, yeah, so we didn't have to postpone months meetings. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, I guess that, that, these years so that I, I might popular. have a question here also is that since we're voting on a planner, uh, it does it make sense for our existing interim planner to be in the room? Yes. Right. Doesn't matter. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, so. All right. Um, Michael can handle it. Yeah, yeah. let's make a motion for the. Let's go first with the conflict engineer, just so that we're up front here. Is that for the planning board conflict engineer? Um, there was one uh, one respondent that that matched the criteria, and that was TNM. I move that we appoint TNM as planning board conflict engineer. Second. Mayor John Moore. Yes. Councilwoman Yvonne Clay. Yes. Michael Manzella? Yes. Trudy Sidefax? I, I'm abstaining because I didn't see this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Tony oh, Carrillo? Go ahead. Okay. Tony Carrillo? Yes. Alexis Taylor? Yes. Barbara Krizak? Yes. Allison McLeod? Yes. All right. I will move that we uh, appoint Clark Hayton Hintz as planning board planner. I second that. 2018. 2018. For 2018. Got it. Okay. Council Clayton? Yes. Mayor John Moore? Yes. Uh, Tony Perillo? Yes. Alexis Taylor? Yes. Uh, Allison McLeod? Yes. Barbara Krizak? Yes. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, so then I will move finally that we nominate TNM Associates as the conflict planning board planner. I second that. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton? Yes. Mayor John Moore? Yes. Michael Manzella? Yes. Trudy Sidefax? Abstain. Abstain. Tony Corlo? Yes. Alexis Taylor? Yes. Alice McLeod? Yes. Mark Prisak? Yes. Uh, and the, uh, the planning board conflict attorney is going back out to RFQ. So I think that other is on beyond that. I think we're we've done all of our appointments. Um, is it time for board for discussion now? Anyone have any discussion items? Okay. I motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Oh, that was, that was so Done.